Hello guys, my name is Nick and in this video I'm going to talk about VMware NSX. I will explain what NSX is, why you may want to choose it, what components constitute this product and how overall architecture looks like. So let's start with very basics of NSX. NSX is an SDN solution for SDDC. From VMware, where SDDC stands for Software Defined Data Center. Right now, there are two flavors or types of NSX, NSX-V and NSX-T. NSX-V is designed and focused on vSphere and virtual machines. It means that it is tightly linked to VMware virtualization products and solutions and it can be used with other hypervisors, doesn't have any direct integration with container virtualization systems and doesn't address physical network challenges or problems. NSX has been built for VMware virtual machines and greatly simplifies virtual networking, optimizes performance, improves security and adds a whole bunch of great features and services. NSX-T is decoupled from vSphere, vCenter, ASXi and even classic virtualization. It can work with other hypervisors, for example KVM and container virtualization, for example Docker or Kubernetes. In this video I'm going to discuss only NSX-V, so please be careful. And final bullet on this slide means the, gener uh, the general idea behind NSX is to provide full network networking services stack using NFV, where NFV stands for Networking Function Virtualization. By these services I mean switching, routing, firewalling, load balancing, etc. Now let's discuss benefits of NSX. At first, NSX is network hardware agnostic, which means that you can run and make use of it, leveraging either your current networking equipment or any equipment that you may want to use. You can run it over a network which leverages proprietary equipment and protocols or use white box uh, solutions and merchant silicon. NSX really doesn't care much. It happens because it builds its own VXLAN overlay on top of your existing physical network. The only requirement is that MTU equals or more than 1600 bytes. It means that your network must be able to carry 1600 or more bytes of payload inside Ethernet frames between your ASXi hosts. Secondly, NSX introduces classic networking services in software. They include VXLAN-based switching, distributed, uh, distributed routing with Anycast default gateway, distributed firewalling, perimeter firewalling, lo uh, firewalling, load balancing, NAT, VPN, DHCP and who knows what else. All these features can help you increase security of your virtual ap uh, applications through distributed firewalling for example, improve their performance using distributed routing with Anycast default gateway, make your infrastructure more agile through VXLAN based switching. It also, uh, it also provides a single point of management located inside your vCenter, which makes your virtual environment more simple and efficient in management. And finally, NSX Manager API allows you to automate your routine processes and workflows and save your precious time. Now let's move on to NSX components. NSX consists of three planes, management plane, control plane and data plane. Management plane consists of NSX manager and vCenter. NSX manager is a single VM. Control plane consists of controller cluster, DLR VM and NSX Edge VM. Control cluster requires three VMs at minimum. Uh, since it represents a truly distributed system. Free nodes not only increase high availability, but also performance leveraging slicing technology. Controller cluster is responsible for managing the hypervisor switching and routing modules. Although it is a control plane component, it can directly affect your data plane in case of a complete failure. Now let's talk about DLR VM and NSX Edge. DLR, which stands for Distributed Logical Routing, is responsible for routing services inside NSX domain and advertising routing information northbound. 
Technically, you can use just DLR VM to advertise NSX domain routing information and peer with your physical network, but typically you would also implement NSX Edge, which is responsible for classic Edge services like load balancing, VPN, net, perimeter firewall, etc. In most cases, DLR sends routing information to the NSX Edge, and NSX Edge send, uh, sends, it snar sends it NARS bound to the physical network. So typically, you have your DLR VM, which is connected to your Edge VM. They use uh, some kind of routing protocol, OSPF or BGP. So DLR advertises routes to NSX Edge and NSX Edge peers with your physical network. and advertises routing information to your physical network. As I have mentioned before, you can actually configure peering and routing between your physical environment and DLR directly without NSX edge. Now I would like to point out that DLR VM and NSX VM and NSX Edge VM are both control plane and data plane components, so you definitely don't want to lose them. Obviously, VMware provides HA capability for these components. And finally, we have ESXi hypervisors. Hypervisor is the key element in NSX since it is directly involved in data plane. Each hypervisor is responsible for local switching, local routing and local firewalling. Each hypervisor acts as a VTAP in order to leverage VXLAN, VXLAN technology. Now let's inspect NSX architecture. I would like to start with NSX internal operations and by that I imply forwarding logic which happens in software and inside NSX domain. On the slide you can see two ESXi hosts. Each of them has three VMs. Green VMs belong to green broadcast domain, and that means that they are in the same IP subnet. For example, 10.10.10.0/24. Blue VMs belong to blue broadcast domain, and which means that they are in the same IP subnet, but obviously the subnet is different from green subnet. So blue subnet, in our example, it can be 10.10.20. That zero slash twenty four. All this information implies that when green VM wants to talk to another green VM, it tries to do that directly without involving its default gateway. The same is true for blue to blue VM's communication. But when blue VM wants to talk to green VM, it needs to go through its default gateway. This traffic has to be routed. Now let's inspect NSX components which help our VMs communicate. Each ESXi, uh, each ESXi host has two DLS, where DLS stands for Distributed Logical Switch, DLS01 and DLS02. When VMs connected to the same DLS, which is really a broadcast domain, want to communicate uh, uh, DLS either uh, switches them locally if VMs are on the same host or switches them using VXLAN, uh, VTAPs and obviously physical network. So when VM1 wants to talk to VM2, traffic goes like that. It doesn't leave uh, obviously uh, ASXi hosts and uh, it is switched locally. When VM1 wants to talk to VM5, for example, traffic goes that way from logical standpoint, so it stays inside DLS01, but from physical point of view, it goes like this. There is no magic. If you have two VMs which are located on the different physical ESXi nodes, they have to traverse physical network to communicate with each other. This green, sorry, this yellow square represents a physical NIC card.
on your ESXi hosts. And this is your physical network, this cloud. Now let's inspect green to blue communication. In this case, green VM has to talk to its default gateway since blue VM is in, the, is in different broadcast domain and different IP subnet. In case of NSX, each SXI host is a router and provides any cast default gateway IP address. It means the traffic from green VM hits its green DLS then it goes according, uh, to according interface of distributed logical router, uh, which has that Anycast default gateway IP address assigned. After that, DLR performs routing, finds out that it needs to use blue DLS and switches traffic. If blue VM is on the same ESXi host, DLS just uh, needs to switch it directly to that VM. So it happens like this. If VM1 needs to talk to VM4, it goes like this. Here happens routing, and now switching happens. So, if blue VM is on different uh, SXI host, DLS needs to involve VXLAN, VTAP, and physical network again. again. So, this is a logical re representation, but from physical standpoint, traffic really goes like this. Also, you can see firewall icon inside each ESXi host, which means that firewalling services are distributed and available at hypervisor level. In other words, you can restrict or if you prefer fancy terms, micro segment, communication between VMs sitting on the same host, even if they belong to the same broadcast domain. Of course, the same is true for protecting communication between VMs sitting on different hosts. So, in other words, you can configure firewalling rules between VM1 and VM2, and uh, these firewall, firewall rules will be implemented locally on SXI hosts, host 01. Now let's take a look at interconnection between NSX domain and external networks and external domains. In my opinion, it is easier to consider NSX as a separate domain inside your infrastructure. On the left portion of this slide, you can see NSX domain, which is connected to the non-NSX domain on the right portion of the slide. Non-NSX domain includes, for example, your campus network, your VAN, spoke or branch offices, and your internet, to name a few. The main idea of this slide is to show that your NSX domain has its own address space and you route towards it. Let's go step by step. Here, uh, you can see color-coded lines which represent DLSs and DLRs IP interfaces. Remember that default gateway for your VMs is located inside your virtual infrastructure, inside your NSX domain. So your VMs don't have to go to the outside physical world in order to receive routing services. Just above we can see DLR VM, which is responsible for sending routing information northbound. Technically, you can avoid using an uh, Edge VM and uh, peer directly between router on the right side and DLR VM, as I have mentioned before. But in most cases, you would like to use an SX Edge. And in this example, DLRVM generates routing information, it can use again OSPF or BGP and, send in, and sends it northbound to the Edge VM. Edge VM sends this route further to the router in non-NSX domain. This architecture allows you to represent your virtual domain as a routable subnet and route towards it instead of switching to every single VM. 
For example, you can summarize all your subnets into 10.10.0.0 slash 16 and advertise it to your NanoNSX domain. Obviously over this connection. The same idea works in the opposite direction. NSX routes towards outside world. It is uh, capable to do that because outside world router on this side advertises all necessary routes to the edge VM, which redistributes uh, its southbound inside NSX domain. So this router sends routing information about campus network, WAN network, default route uh, to the internet, advertise it to NSX Edge VM, and NSX Edge VM advertises it uh, southbound to the DLR VM. Pretty neat, right? You may wonder though what happens if you need to stretch broadcast domain to both virtual and physical world. For example, if you have a database subnet which includes both virtual and physical workloads. That is totally possible using various approaches, but uh, it is a little bit out of scope of uh, this overview video. Instead, let me tell you a little bit about NSX Edge. This VM is responsible for providing classic Edge services like Perimeter Firewall, NET, which stands for network address, address, uh, network address Translation, VPN, Virtual Private Network, Load Balancing, at the end, as I had mentioned before, Routing. So you definitely can make use of it. To sum up, I would like to say that NSX is a really great product for your VMware virtual environment, which provides a lot of useful features and makes your life easier. But if you also need to upgrade your physical network, you may want to explore another SDN solution, for example, Cisco ACI. I have the same overview video about uh, that product as well, so please check it out. If you like this video, put your thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and have a really nice day.